Greetings, friends. So, I'm going to try to do the impossible and summarize uh, my reflections on a really fascinating unit on the history and mission of the community college in three minutes. Uh, based on the four prompts provided by our uh, intrepid design team. So, um, what is the mission of a community college? Uh, the Ken Meyer article we read attempts to, uh, as he puts it, demystify uh, the mission and despite the many, many variegated missions of comprehensive community college, the hundreds that exist uh, in our country, uh, I think we can boil, boil this down to maybe two things, right? Community colleges are community-based and are open access. Um, so what does that mean? Not every, not every city or, or uh, region has uh, a research university or even a public regional school or a liberal arts college, but just about everyone has a community college, right? Um, and that, that's uh, for a couple of reasons. The creation of the uh, comprehensive community college throughout the course of the 20th century uh, as a means to expand access to post high school education and meet the needs of a ever changing industrializing economy. Um, demanded that uh, institutions were more responsive to more local situations, right? And so there you have the um, building out of higher education institutions in uh, smaller regions. <clears throat> What that means, however, is that um, the community college should be, again, attentive to the needs of its community uh, in terms of the kinds of graduates it's producing for um, economic, social, and political life, right? Uh, and that looks, as we know, very different in Iowa than it looks like in New York, California, Texas, and so forth. Um, just in New York City uh, community colleges, I'm, I'm a CUNY graduate myself, there's probably very few uh, agricultural machinery programs, and yet uh, Kirkwood has one of the best in the state for obvious reasons. The second part of that is open access. Uh, so I think the through line of my reflection will talk about um, democracy or a democratic principle. Uh, and in some way, that's the open access mission, right? Uh, there are no SATs, uh, there are no GPA cutoffs, um, there is no um, age limit, uh, class restrictions, uh, questions of race, gender, and ability. Uh, those, while they are recognized by instructors and by our institution for the sorts of barriers they've put up and the differing kinds of resources folks who've experienced those realities bring to us, um, there's certainly no barrier to admission into the community college, right? That's what the open access principle means. Um, if you're looking for a more strict regimented definition of the mission of the community college, I do like this little, uh, this brief foray on page 14 of Ken Meyer's article, the uh, California Association of Junior Colleges report, Strayer report, which lays out the community college mission as terminal education, general education, orientation and guidance, lower division training, adult education, the removal of matriculation difficulties. So I think we see that a lot um, up to the present as a major part of what community colleges provide to their communities. Obviously, um, terminal education and training, um, whether it be in the, uh, the trades or um, another kind of uh, technical route that um, for which a four-year bachelor degree or graduate training isn't necessary. Adult education, obviously, uh, the community colleges have historically um, catered to students who are returning 
uh, to the classroom, perhaps after a long layoff or retraining uh, adults. And finally, general education and the removal of matriculation difficulties. So the idea that rather than shipping off to the uh, major university when your state, you can uh, stay home and, and uh, for a much more affordable value, um, receive just as good a liberal arts education as you can get at a university. Those are all really important. Now, what social impact has community, do community colleges have on the communities they serve? Question number two. Following the next, uh, the next passage from what I just read, um, there's a really interesting kind of uh, outline of what, what the Strayer Report considers to be the social and philosophical mission of the community college. And I'll try to summarize it. Um, the junior college is committed to democratic way of life to recognizing individual man as the highest value in the universe, to um, committed to the policy of granting to individual man, people, the maximum amount of freedom, personal initiative, and adventure, and committed to the policy of providing for all children of all people a post-high school education. So I think that kind of captures things quite nicely. Um, and there's a few things going on there, right? Like um, the first, which I'll put to the side because it's just a kind of personal fascination is the obvious kind of Cold War connotations of this mission of the community college as uh, holding up individual man and uh, personal initiative and so forth. But we'll leave that to the side. That would be an interesting kind of uh, critique in its own way. But um, I think critically as 20th century labor conditions required more and more intellectual work from their workers. Uh, it became clear that higher education was pretty much the next frontier in democratic schooling, you might say, right? So um, the liberal arts, universe, liberal arts colleges of the 19th century and the uh, major research universities of the 20th century were obviously ill-suited in different ways to that task. Um, and so the community college emerges to, um, again, welcome and engage all, regardless of social distinction. And as a result, the impacts would be um, increased social mobility for uh, those populations who were historically left behind by the uh, kind of elite manufacturer of education. I'm, I myself am a first generation student, so I know uh, quite well what that means. And I think um, something not really touched upon, but important is that community colleges are the kind of cultural centers of their communities as well. Uh, again, if, um, most community colleges have really robust um, artistic and musical and theatrical lives and provide a lot um, to the community, not only in terms of being uh, perhaps economic engines, but uh, also for um, providing those kind of uh, critical, non-economical features of human life, right? Um, is the mission of the community college still relevant in the 21st century? Yeah, not to sound cliche, but yes, more than ever. Uh, I think the hallmark of the last couple decades um, of economic, social, and political life has really been decentralization, right? Um, the way we work, the way we communicate, the way we live, consume, shop, and so forth, they happen now more and more spontaneously, um, remotely, and ever more dynamically. And so I think most educational institutions are kind of fixed in older models of, of um, elitist education. And so the research university in the United States, the public research university, which is still like a modern marvel, I think probably America's greatest creation maybe, um, will have its function in uh, being a main producer of knowledge. Uh, the private liberal arts schools that survive will probably remain uh, their major task, which has been prep schools for uh, the wealthy in the country. And then um, the community college, of course, um, 
has always, out of necessity, been more flexible and nimble. Right? Um, it's the only school that has to be immediately responsive to the needs of its community, right? To the changing needs of uh, labor and, and economy, the changing demographic needs of uh, the population as it shifts through time. And so as a result, um, oh, in addition to that, the community college has specifically um, yoked together um, both the wide-ranging open-ended inquiry of a uh, liberal arts model, which is again an incredibly important thing in the United States, in the U.S., with more practical trades-based uh, education, which again is more attentive to the local needs of a community. Finally, how did Kirkwood's mission, vision, values align with historical mission of community college? Well. Kirkwood's mission was forced in the, you know, great post-war era of the community college explosion. So obviously, um, its mission is perfectly aligned, uh, which is um, to identify community needs, provide accessible education, and promote lifelong learning, right? It's... Uh, Its vision is, of course, tilted towards uh, 21st century concerns by, by uh, talking about not just attending to the needs of the region and, and the country, but also adopting a kind of more global perspective and outlook as the world becomes increasingly global in its uh, you know, economic and political maneuver, despite you know, some kind of political reaction that we get from time to time, as we're currently uh, experiencing. And finally, the values. So these are interesting. Respect, diversity, um, responsibility, and excellence. So respect, diversity, and responsibility, I think we could we can kind of combine those together because those are the democratic values of the community college kind of reincarnated for the 21st century, right? Um, the community college has to welcome all people um, in despite uh, not a despite, actually, because of their uh, great diversity of, um, of backgrounds and experiences um, to develop their talents and to help ensure a dignified, uh, respected life for every human being. Um, and to do so, once again, um, to be responsible to the needs of the surrounding community, right? And the, that last term, excellence, which I know in the values is uh, discussed in terms of the way that uh, we as a we as a uh, faculty staff and administration um, serve the public uh, in an excellent manner. But I think maybe what's more interesting is that to think about the way that having or, or creating utmost respect uh, and being responsible to the diversity of uh an ever-shifting kind of local populace, the community, um, is in fact the kind of uh, epitome or apex of excellence, which seems kind of counterintuitive, right? Um, but isn't that, in the end, kind of the utmost democratic principle, right? That um, it's in <clears throat> uplifting and giving voice to um, those uh, on the outside of what's considered to be excellence. Uh, that in itself becomes uh, the most excellent example. So I'm going to pause. I went, let's see, five times over my three minutes. So I hope whoever's watching these will enjoy that. Bye.